Welcome back. What up? Welcome back to Take a Pitch. How you doing? I'm a little tired, man. You know, the lot going on. Help keep up. I yeah. mean, you called it. The winter meetings are uh, chaotic. So we got we have this, this thing where it's either the winter meetings are, are boring as fuck or really chaotic. This year we chose chaos. Yep. And I mean absolute chaos. Uh, I mean, let's, 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 come on. We had a s- breaking news that what one in the one in the morning uh the yeah, it was almost almost one yeah almost one when it came to san diego we had we had oh, we had a classic Heyman mess up of course Heyman's going Heyman went full nightingale it, it, so i, I don't Heyman think went a, full nightingale I don't, I don't i don't know if it was a mess up or or a, we had or, a couple we had a couple spelling errors too well yeah but we'll we'll, we'll get we, there. The world was introduced to to arson judge and coke animals. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there were more. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, Nightingale messed up too. Nightingale fucked up bad. What a boob! So I have do? that screenshot sent to you. Oh, we love boob. Um, um, we'll we'll get we'll get to it. I'll send it to you now. But we'll get to it. Okay. But yeah, no, Nightingale had a fuck up, and uh, you know, I listen. Everyone wants to be first. No one wants to be accurate. Um, yeah, that, that's that's literally it. Which I mean, before 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 the winter meetings, though, you and I got handed some heartbreak, so, some some betrayal, some anger. Yes, all on a silver platter. And you know how they say everything's bigger in Texas. The betrayal is bigger mm-hmm. when it goes to Texas. Um, I'm still a little angry. I'm not thrilled. You know, congrats to him for securing the bag, but um, fuck you, respectfully. Could have been, could have literally gone to any bar and never bought a drink in his life in New York if he decided to stay. But Jacob mm-hmm. DeGrom decided to up and go to Texas. Five years, $185 million with a six-year option of full no-trade clause. Yep. How are you feeling? Eh. Over it. Um, yeah, even after the presser? Yeah, I mean, got what I wanted out of it. So thanks oh, to the yeah. fans. And, and he reiterated that again on uh, whatever show it was, MLB Now or whatever it was. Um, yeah, I missed I miss all of the network shows. Yeah. But uh yeah, he reiterated that again and uh said, you know, basically that uh that it was the fans, you know. And I mean so, he didn't ha- Yeah, he it was the fans, obviously. He didn't he were great. He's he's a guy from the land, Florida, which is outside of Orlando. He's not. He's never been the big media presence. Do you really expect a guy that you think that he loves New York City? <laughs> I would be shocked if he loves New York City. Um, Listen, apparently he's got a house out near us. Yeah. Yeah, Rock Center. That is such cap. I don't know who told you that. That is the biggest cap There's I've ever heard. There's a picture of him and his son in front of a Rock Center fire truck that was circulating in Twitter last year. How do you know he doesn't know someone that lives in Rockville Center? Okay, well, even if he does, who is this person? Can can, can you want to just give us pick up the phone with? I have some words, some words. A friend, it could be anybody. Who knows? Anyway, they, anyway, they, you're gonna. He's not living me, there anymore. He's living down down in Texas. You're, you're gonna tell um, me that a multi multi millionaire baseball player is living in Rockville Center. Compared to the other surrounding towns, yeah. Why? Why would they live down here? Get away from it all. Who knows? Get away anyway. from it all. Like I was telling you the other day, Reyes lives up in Manhasset, in a gated Manhasset, community. Right. And and, and Scherzer just got a, a house in Brookville. Yep. Nice, you see very that nice shit? town. You I see did not see shit? the house. My mom was telling me about it though. Oh my god! Five point three million dollar house. Yeah. I'll look it up. But oh, anyway, man. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, no, wow. you, you, so we just outed Texas where three. And... We just outed where three Mets players potentially have well, houses. You, you, well, fuck it. If you if you could find the Degrom one, because there's no gated community there. So if you could find the Degrom one, be be our guest and uh, let us know. If you try for Reyes or Scherzer, though, you're yeah, probably no, you, going to get arrested. Right. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah, anyway, he's down in Texas. in Texas. Yeah. Uh. Clearly, he wanted the years. Don't blame him. He's going to his age 34 season mm-hmm. next year. He'll turn 34 during the season. And uh, 35. 35. My bad. Yeah, you're right. Um. And he so he is 34, turning 35. <clears throat> Who wants the years? It essentially you know, keeps him in Texas for the rest of his career. Uh depends. I mean with a full no trade clause, so, five years, he'll be at thirty nine. He doesn't have I don't think he has longevity that guys like Verlander and Scherzer have. Why? The arm injuries, unless the arm injuries unless these injuries that he's had the last two years were an absolute fluke to just keep his value as high as possible and to get out of New York. Because there have been a lot of rumors here circulating the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, going from him not wanting a relationship with Steve Cohen to him preferring the Wilpons, actually, which I don't is know if I... a massive character flaw if I've ever seen one. I, I don't know uh, if I buy that one. Listen, I don't know either, but rumors. To him, just not wanting to be in New York, to his, or, or his wife not wanting to raise the kids in New York. You know, there's there's so many rumors going around, and only Jake knows the the, the truth. Um, he said he 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 enjoyed the, he, he liked the, the vision that the Rangers were building, which is absolute cap. He wanted the money in the years. That's um, that's that's one hundred eighty five and a half million dollars. Says. A lot longer, a lot farther in Texas than it would in New York City. That is very true as well. I mean, and. Mm-hmm. The, the the Mets reportedly offered three for one twenty, but came out today uh, that it was they over one twenty, but it was not one twenty. So, mm-hmm. I mean, shave a few dollars off. It's no real, really yeah. No but difference. again, it wasn't wasn't even one twenty. So, it's a tough look for the Mets in that regard. So, you wonder where do they pivot? Real quick before we turn to go to where they pivot, your thoughts on the ground thing? That you I think he's the right choice. I... Yeah, yeah. Why not? All right. He's going to be making more money. He wants the years. He wants to have the. He wants to have the certainty. He doesn't want to have to deal with another free agent thing, unless you know. He clearly lied a lot over the past year. So, but the only thing that he held true was that he was going to opt out of his contract. <laughs> yeah. So does Which he? We actually... should have known he was long gone by then. Not necessarily. I mean, you, you would think that, you know, his value would have dropped a little bit. You know, the Rangers Rangers are making a gamble. You know, we do not know yes. what his arm is, you know. Um, but look at Justin Verlander. The guy was 38 years old and got Tommy John. He was out for a year and a half. Did not pitch at all. Comes back. And he was the best pitcher in baseball last year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you look at guys like that. Max Scherzer, sure, he was hurt a few times this year with the oblique. Two times. But the guy had a two 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 five two two six ERA, whatever it was. And they're still and good. Don't pitchers. forget, with Scherzer, too, he gives it 125% every pitch, everything he does. So, of course, yeah. it's, it, muscle injuries are going to happen for him yeah. as he gets older. It. It's it's almost that, guaranteed. It, unfortunate. It's, it's an unfortunate guarantee. It, it's going to happen regardless. What's the difference between Max Scherzer, age thirty seven, and Max Scherzer, age 30, 38, or six or five? There's really yeah. not that much of a difference. You're talking about years, years here. Very very little time to change, and we're talking about professional athletes. It's a very different ball game, as compared to if. You and, I you and I were 37, yeah. and we were going out and fucking giving it up. Oh, all. dude, my oblique is shot by 28. I'm, yeah, I'm on the ground yeah. crying. I think yeah. that he made the right decision. Money and length of the contract. He will be there for six years. Uh, if Texas doesn't succeed, 
I would see that they would probably ship him off towards the end of that deal. And Except he has somewhere. the full no trade clause. Yeah, he'll take it if it's the right place, though. Yeah. So last thing on Jake, you said it was a, a bit of a gamble. Uh, obviously, there's mm-hmm. metrics for everything nowadays, and an advanced metric is Stuff Plus. I don't know if you've heard of this one. I have not. Um, takes into account velo, spin, and sh- pitch shape. Okay. Uh, Jake is third among starting pitchers um, at age 34 in Stuff Plus. Mm-hmm. The two ahead of him are both younger than 25 in Spencer Strider and Hunter Green. And right behind him is also under 30, Corbin Burns, age 24. DeGrom is the only one in the top four that is over 30. Obviously, it is a risk, but the the numbers, the underlying metrics, the, the, the face value, eye test, all there to where it's a worthy contract. Don't get me wrong. But it's the health that you got to wonder with with Texas. And I agree it is a, it is a game, but. I wonder that with anybody you sign, though. Exactly. And we'll Every talk signing about, is a we'll, risk. We'll talk which is, about that. Which is why the Wilpons always had insurance policies and everything. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? Insane. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they, they recouped back most of David Wright's contract. Yeah, pretty much all of it. I, it you, yeah. If he missed, what was it? I think it was like two-thirds of the season. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. They got you, the money back on it. Yep, then they got back, I think it was like 90 or 95% of the contract. So they paid like league minimum or whatever it was. Um, yeah, it was insane. So, um, yeah, and and we'll we'll talk about injuries with I'm sure quite a few other contracts. Yeah, I mean, well, we said where did the best pivot, and it didn't really take them too long to to figure out where they wanted to go. Obviously, we're linked to Rodon and Verlander, focusing mostly on Verlander and succeeding, bringing Kate Upton and I mean, sorry, Justin Verlander to to Queens. Um, now Verlander, I mean, I don't, two for eighty six, with the third year vesting options. He has to hit, I think, uh, hit one hundred forty innings, hundred forty in twenty twenty four, yep. to trigger that option. Yep. And, and Verlander said that he wants, he wants to, to have make sure that that can get triggered. He wants that, like he wants well, to I be mean, that guy. Of course. Yeah. I mean, he'll... that'll be his age. What forty two season. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. One more. One more contract would, boost before he heads and, out. And that would be that. Uh, that option would be worth thirty-five million. Right. How many people are going to be offering him thirty-five million on the market? I mean, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe you never know, but probably not too likely. So. Yeah. yeah. So so obviously with the Mets. When you miss out on the ground, you turn your attention straight to pitching because that that was the whole the entire offseason. You have to build the the, the rotation. You got to find mm-hmm. a bullpen, and the Mets have been active to say the least. Uh, so with Verlander coming into the Queens, Rodon still unsigned. The chances of the Mets getting both of them is incredibly unlikely given today's events. Um, what are your thoughts? Would you rather have Verlander or Rodon? Would you prefer to see Rodon in the years? What What are you thinking? Um, overall, I think I would rather Verlander. Um, I had, it's hard, though. You know, if you want to talk about an injury risk, Rodon is your guy. I mean, the guy has been hurt <laughs> every single year of his career. There's literally not a single season that he was not hurt. So, actually, last year, I think he might have not. Last year or the year before? One of the no, years was last Giants. year. Well, he's only been with the Giants for one year. So, there so you go. So, he was two years. I don't know why. Nah, he was with the White Sox. Had his rebound year. and uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he, only, right, right. but, but he didn't uh, – what's it called? He didn't uh, have enough innings to qualify. Otherwise, he probably would have won Cy Young in 2021. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, eh, both, both are good in their own ways. Um. For what the Mets are doing, I think Verlander is the right choice. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that Cohen, you and I talk about doesn't want to commit long-term to anyone, really. Yeah. Um, well, At least to this point. Pitchers, to this point. at least. Yeah, pitcher-wise, yeah. It's kind of taking uh, a uh, 
taking a uh, page out of the Giants playbook over the past mm-hmm. uh, seven years or whatever it's been. They don't yeah. they don't sign guys long term. Yeah. And Giants have had success. I mean, even even the Dodgers too. A lot of the homegrown guys have stepped up for them, but obviously the Mets don't have that yet. Matt Allen on the pipeline, a couple guys there. Um, I think it's really just Matt Allen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Blake. I mean Blade. Oh, Blade Blade said well, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be a stud, dude. I mean, they, they have a few I like his stuff. They have a few pitchers but, and I think that the top guy is Blade Tidwell at number eight. Yeah. Well, because Allen had Tommy John last year. Well, so yeah. He kind of dropped. Yeah. So they have a few guys in between like eight to like 14. They have, I mm-hmm. think they're like pretty much all pitchers. And this year will define that. You know, Blade Tidwell was drafted last year. You know, and there's a, there's a few other guys in the Mets farm system that that they, you know, you need to look out for. They might, you know, might turn into something. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Mets traded a lot of arms. You get some, get some pieces. Chris Bass is now free agent. Mets could turn to him to look to fill up the rotation. Should they miss out on uh, Kodai Senga, who they're still in on? A um, lot of interest there. But <clears throat> yeah, they, they, there was a lot of these guys, a lot of the mid tier guys the Mets are looking at mm-hmm. that actually went off the board really quickly. You know, and we'll, we can run through them real quick. We run through the pitchers. Um, Kyle Gibson very quickly went to Baltimore. Yeah, uh, right. he was a guy that another Mets targeting. Jameson Tyone, they were big on him. Yep. He got a four year deal for sixty eight million dollars with the Cubs. Uh, mm-hmm. The Cubs are an interesting team. It seems like they're trying to spend their way back into contention as opposed to build it up. No, uh, both. Well, so they're trying to build up a farm system currently to be able to. I think they're trying to take the the Padres model and accelerate its uh, pace. Build your farm system, but also sign a free agents here and there. Yeah, I think you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the right way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we'll see what happens there. Andrew Heaney was another name linked to the Mets. He went to Texas two for twenty five with an opt out. The, the then the, the guys that Mets had Ty, Taiwan Walker and Chris Bassett Taiwan Walker four for seventy two straight up with the Phillies, um, good deal for him, very good fantastic deal. fantastic for him. And I'm happy for him. He's a good. He seems like a, he's a good guy. Who would, yeah, you know, I love Ty. Was the best for love Ty. Yeah. And he he did. You know what? He took a deal with the Mets that it was a proven deal for him. Show he can stay healthy. Show he's got stuff. Because he was a very talked about prospect. Yes. So this was a, a two-year prove deal, and he proved it. You know, the kid, the guy shoved, and he's getting paid from it. Had, and good had, for him. Had a couple fantastic first halves from that. So. Yeah. Just, it wasn't bad in the second half of last year either. No, no, no. But he, still, he still faltered. So a oh, little bit. But know. again, these are the two most healthy he's been. Two, two years most, two most healthy years he's been had. Yeah, but those uh, first halves. So again, you, if you could get him to get that, it, and maybe the Phillies are the perfect place because look, Wheeler, right? The guy had what three years in a row with or two, three years in a row, whatever it was with the Mets. Second half was elite, elite, top yeah, five yeah. best second half. First half though was horrendous, horrendous. Hard now, to start. Now look at him with with the Phillies, right? You know, I, I, again. Even though we're Mets fans, we hope we wish best for Taiwan Walker because oh, yeah. just a good dude. As long as he's not pushing the Mets. Um, really, the only mid-tier rotation guy that the Mets were looking at linked to that hasn't been signed is Chris Bassett. Now, obviously, they linked to Sanga. Would you rather have Sanga or Bassett? Um, now, I'm talking guess- in a general sense, not just the Mets. Oh, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard. Uh, I would take my gamble on Senga just because he's younger and I know he's a flamethrower. So, you know, Chris Bassett's more of a crafty pitcher. Right. Chris Bassett is a very good pitcher. He's a very serviceable pitcher. So, um, and he's going to get paid. He's going to get yeah. paid well. And, and the thing is, you know, Chris Bassett is what? He's 33, mm-hmm. right? Turning 34 next year. So, you know, 
I, yeah. I'd be iffy. You know, he want. He, I know he said he was saying that he wants a five six year deal. I'd be iffy on a five six year deal for him. I mean, not that he's a flamethrower, so you know he's not going to be losing his step or anything really. But yeah, I'd st- I'd still be a little little weary on that while Sanga is younger and. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's, you? it's definitely – you can't go wrong either way. Listen, let's not get started on me and Bassett, okay? We have an interesting relationship here where I like to trade a lot, and my season tickets just happened to send me to eight Chris Bassett starts in 24 games, 25 games, 25 games last year. So as much as I love Chris Bassett, I don't know if I can sit through another season of eight Chris Bassett starts on my season ticket plan. I, I, I don't know. but. <laughs> no, I, I like Bassett a lot, and uh, yeah, I like Bassett. Sanga looks legit. Yeah. So I, I, I'm okay with either. Mm-hmm. The price points where we're where we're at now. Granted, with the Mets, they don't give a fuck about the price point. Yeah, point. Clearly, but, but but still, what am I paying for this investment? Mm-hmm. As to what I'm going to get back, obviously Bassett's older. We mentioned, and this just goes for any team, really. I mean. Teams that are looking for pitching in the Giants, the Yankees, you know, all these, a lot of these, a lot of these teams looking for pitching. Yeah. Bassett's got the the established career. Mm-hmm. Sanga has the potential to be really, really good and make a name for himself as one of the top Japanese pitchers to come over. Because mm-hmm. when you look at it, the Japanese pitchers, haven't translated all that well. As a whole, uh, I don't know if I'd agree with yes, that. Yes, you you have Dale Nomo, but you also have Kei Giwa. We have a very large spectrum here, okay? Yeah, but like that's also it, they had a very different spectrum over there as well, though. Right. You know, I mean, I, I I would much rather take my risk on a Japanese pitcher than a Japanese hitter. Yeah, I don't know about you. Yeah, probably. Because it's the mentality. Same, it's the same thing. Listen, mm-hmm. you know, pitching is pitching. Um, but either way, right. it's going to be interesting to see how the market for uh, Bassett shapes up. With really after Rodon, he's the next guy. Mm-hmm. The most established, most you know, best resume really. Um, but let's get into some other deals because a lot happened, as we said. Yeah. We touched on Tyone. My pass over. Touched on Ty. Just kind of to make sure I don't don't repeat here. All right. The big one that happened that came out of sort of nowhere. Hold on. You know you missed a couple, right? Hang on. I mean, I mean, I have. I I can I say my list down here. Yeah, what do you got? Zach Eflin. Oh, Eflin, right? Eflin. Holy and, crap, Eflin. Anything on Eflin you want you want to say? It's a three year, forty million dollar deal with the Rays. First of all, it's the largest contract in Rays history. Mm-hmm. Largest free agent contract in in Tampa Bay Rays history. I mean, is that a shock? <laughs> that <laughs> sounds about Zach right Eflin to me. Zach Eflin, a little bit, but. Sounds sounds right to me. Um, um apparently, apparently the Red Sox had a high higher bid for Eflin. But he I'd chose to stay at home in Florida. Uh, yeah. Pitch for Tampa. That makes sense. But I, I was gonna say I, I would also rather pitch for the Rays than the Red Sox. Personally. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, if you're if you're a guy who has stuff, you're on you're a cusper like Zach Eflin, who can break out with the right coaching. And you saw in the playoffs, you know, as as a reliever down the stretch, he started to shine. Yeah. Um, obviously, they brought him to, to, to start, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. The Rays are known for unconventional things. And what else did I miss? Jose Abreu to the Houston Astros, three years, okay, 58 million, 58.5 million. My apologies. Mm-hmm. Mike Clevenger, one year, 8 million with the White Sox. Forgot about him, too. And Heimer Condelario, one year. Five million with the Nats. How do I forget about our guy Heimer? Because that's our guy right there. How do I forget I about him? 
because you went to the Grom and you just went forward. And I, I, I picked up on it halfway through. Uh, well, we got but it. Either way. We got him. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Listen, all good deals for these guys. Uh, Clavender is very much a proven yeah. deal. Try to see if you can stay healthy. Exactly. Brayu, I mean, you, I've come around on my I, on this. Hey, this guy's on a Hall of Fame pace that no one's talking about. Um, oh, you I agree now? Houston. I do. I have come around <laughs> on this. Yes. Come around oh, that, this. that's what you said. My bad. I didn't hear that first part. Yes, yes. I said I've cut the. Uh, uh, yeah. This is the take that I've come around on, but. Um, yeah, he's on a Hall of Fame pace. And he goes to Houston. Can't wait, can't wait to see how pissed off everyone's going to be when he thrives there. Yeah, that, and that lineup. ballpark, he's going to thrive. A couple lineups that we're talking uh, about a lot about the past couple of days. Oh, Everyone's forgetting that yeah. lineup. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Candelario. Yeah, the emergency pain there. And Candelario, that, that's a – can you get me at the deadline deal? We're, still, we're we're picking him up in fantasy again. If anybody on fantasy, that's what, but that's what hundred percent. A, a, a what can you get at the deadline deal? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it, it's a it's a, what yeah, Nelson Cruz it, is supposed to be. <laughs> it's a flip. It's a flip investment. Well, yeah. teams teams made offers for Nelson Cruz. Oh or, really? Yeah, but he didn't want to leave, or it wasn't good enough in the Nationals' eyes, or something like that. The Nationals had insane prices on everyone. That's their one problem. But. Right, they right. Had, and the inside prices they have, they won't pay. Yeah, exactly. So uh, could have kept Trey Turner, could have kept Bryce Harper being there. So instead, they both decided to team up. Yeah, there you go. In Philly, yep. stay in the division, torment the Phillies and everyone else. Trey Turner, new Philly shortstop, eleven years, three hundred million dollars, full no trade clause. I don't think there's any opt outs. Takes him through his age forty season. He rejected a $342 million deal from San Diego. That would have made him the highest paid shortstop in Major League Baseball history. On paper. Beating Lindor's 341, beating it, who would have been his teammate, Fernando Tatis, his 340, <laughs> it, which is still a wacky investment. Um, the Padres but, you know, are fucking longer. idiots for trading him to begin with. Well, yeah. I, I knew you'd appreciate that one though. Who, when I sent the the trade the trade Turner picture with the, in the Potter's gear, what are they gonna do with all these photoshops? Yeah, <laughs> I need to appreciate that one. But but like, who who did they even get back in that trade? Do you know? I don't know off the top uh, of my head. I looked it, I looked it up like a few weeks ago too. But anyway, um, yeah, Turner. I mean, it was known that he wanted to stay on the East Coast. His wife's mm-hmm. from Jersey. He went to NC State. He's a he's you know he's an East Coast guy. It was known that he wanted he's to be on the Florida. East Coast. Yeah. So, Trey Turner in Philly. This that lineup, man. What that lineup's looking like? Oh, it's a big trade. Yeah, it was. It was. He was a player to be named later. Well, yeah, player to be named later. He was named. What he was just, it? He just couldn't. Uh, what was the trade? He was sent with Joe Ross to the Nationals. The Padres sent Jake Bowers, Rene Rivera, Bert hey, Smith, and Bert this Smith. This is a name we haven't heard in a while. To the Rays. The Rays sent Jose Castillo. James Shields, right? No. Jose Castillo, <sighs> Ryan Hannigan, Will Myers, and Gerardo Reyes uh, to the Padres. Uh, and the Nationals sent Travis Ott. Steven Souza and Steven Souza Jr. to the Rays. Was the Will Myers deal okay? Wow, what a de- what a wacky deal! That is, yeah, three team trade. That's right. Hmm. What a wacky deal. Well, either way, he's in Philly now, and yep. and I mean, can we look at this lineup as of, as of right now? Like this is insane. The the lineup that the Phillies could try out on opening day, and obviously they may not be done. Which is the wilder part, too. Schwarber and left leading off, which is interesting because they have Trey Turner now who can lead off. There's a lot of flexibility in this. Turner, Harper, Real Muto, Hoskins, Castellanos in the sixth spot, potentially. That's a deep fucking lineup. That Alec Bohm at lineup. seven, Bryson Stott, and Brandon Marsh. I mean, this is a lineup that can mash. The, the knock on the field has always been their pitching. They made it to the net. They made it to the World Series on the back of their offense and some good pitching. They got a lot of luck out of that bullpen, but this is an offense that 
come come really any must win game, I don't want to have to face. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the deepest lineups in, in baseball, and it's insane. Yep. Um, and it sucks they're in our division. But hey. Yeah, I mean they re- they really fall off at six, but after six, but we well, you never know what kind of improvements Bomb was going to make with with the addition of of yeah. Turner. Yeah. I mean, you never know what could happen. But either way, it is a very good lineup, and a scary one at that. Kind but it's of, not the scary. It's arguably not the scar- scariest lineup in in the National League, let alone baseball. Yeah. Because to answer this, the San Diego Padres, who missed out on Trey Turner, they missed out on Aaron Judge, which we'll get to in a minute, because they did apparently make a informal offer of ten for four hundred to Judge. They made the offer of. I think it was 11 for 342 to Turner. Mm-hmm. They pivot and go to Xander Bogarts, 11 for 280. Yep. And and we'll touch on this and touch on the deal in a minute. But when Tatis gets back on April 20th, their lineup can look like Tatis in left or wherever he they decide to play him. Mm-hmm. Soto in and the other in right, Machado, Bogarts. Cronenworth, Austin Nola, Grisham. If they get playoff Grisham, they're lucky. David Dahl. Who, you mean wild card series Grisham? David Dahl, who is not a bad hitter. I don't know what happened. I granted his best years were in Colorado, but the bat to ball skills have always been there for David Dahl. Yeah, he's kind of just fallen off an absolute fucking cliff. He has. Yeah, I, I don't nowhere. know what happened. Hopefully, really... in a lineup full of the hitters like this. Mm-hmm. Either he'll get better pitches to hit, he'll, he'll learn how to hit. I, I don't know what, but when he was in Colorado, he was a threat. And then Hassan Kim ran out that order or any variation of that lineup. Because that's a lineup you can move around a ton of flexibility, both positionally as well as in that order. A lot of protection you can put. There is so many different ways you can form out that lineup. Yeah. And it's another one that, you know, you look at it, it's five deep, mm-hmm. depending on what you get out of the rest of the guys. Could go ninety. You don't know who their DH could be. They could bring back Brandon Drury for all we know, because the Padres don't seem to be done. They get they have some fu- sort of fucking money laundering scheme to have money coming out their asshole. I, I mean, yeah, they, they got they got a what a billion right to four guys, something like that. Yeah, let's see. So Tatis Jr. is three forty one. Machado was three ten. Yeah, two eighty. Bogarts is two eighty, and then Soto's gonna have to get paid. And who was the other one? I don't remember who. Oh, maybe Musgrove. It might have been him. On Musgrove is 100. Musgrove is 100. And Darvish, I think, was another one yeah. that they're paying. But e- either way, there's a fuck ton of money tied up in those, those that, that core. Oh, yeah. So let's go to, let's go to the Bogart deal itself. 11 for 280. I know how I feel personally. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um... What are my thoughts? I think it's a fantastic deal for him. Fucking fantastic for him. <laughs> um, he is already not a good defender. Um, yeah, let's start. Let's right. Let's start. Go right into the negatives. <laughs> are are let's you? Go. Gonna, you, you could maybe. We are definitely argue, not Mets fans. <laughs> You can de- maybe even argue that he is the worst defender out of the three potent- or four potential shortstops, really, on the team. Um, he's not going to age well defensively. He, I mean, he's already not good, so how can he age well? The only way that I see this actually panning out for the Padres is if Manny Machado opts out of his contract after this year. Right, and that's a huge, huge question mark. There's been no indication yeah. either way. Because not only do you have Machado opting out, and then what, year after that, you have Soto who's in free agency, right? Yep. They thought for this year and next year, right? This year and next year. Yep. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, it It's... It's a great deal for Xander. Um, I'm happy for him. 
get him out of Boston. They are fucking faltering like no other. I don't know what has happened with them since they won that World Series. They are inadequate. I'll say that in the front office. They are very, very inadequate. It's an abysmal. It's, it's... So the deal itself is an overpay. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I projected Xander to get a deal somewhere in the 180 to 230 range. Somewhere there. You didn't think that he would get length? Or, I, I, 30, what, 30 years old with 10 years under his belt? Yep. A lot of wear and tear on the body at the big league level. Um, it doesn't matter. Everyone's been playing the same at, amount of time. At shortstop, though? Everyone's been playing the same amount of time. Yeah, he he's been able to stay healthy for the most part. You know, you wonder when that when's going to drop off. Dirt. I didn't think he was going to get eleven years. I, did, I didn't think he would get eleven years either. I mean, that's going to take him into into forty. You know. Yeah. So I mean, I was thinking he was going to go back. I thought he was going to go back to the Red Sox at like seven for one eighty. Seven for 70? Because that's the only deal that the Red Sox would have given him. Yeah, the, whatever the, they disrespected him. They are playing broke the ball. They are playing money ball. They better trade Rafael Devers. Right. This and now, and that, this and is what it comes a, into. Get a massive haul for him. That is. This the, is what it comes down to now. Yeah. You have a Rafael Devers sized elephant in your organization right now. Uh, would you even want Devers to Devers is not happy that, that you let Bogart leave. Why would you? <laughs> that is the face of your franchise who is 24, 25 years old. The infield version of Juan Soto, and he's gotten better defensively. Yeah. But he and Soto are about the same defensively at this point. He's, he's much better. Devers is Soto? much better than Soto. Okay. There Soto you go. is not and, good. There you go. Now, to me, if you want to have any chance at competing in the next five to six years, you are giving Devers a blank check and going after Carlos Correa. But that's not going to happen. This Because uh, the Red Sox floss, I mean, Heim Bloom is always wary of big mega deals. And that's always been his downfall. Playing red, playing fucking raised ball. In right, Boston. it's been his downfall since his time in Tampa. Now, on the other side of it, AJ Preller has a knack for mega deals, and that's also been his downfall with the Eric Hosmer deal, the Will Myers deal, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. James Shields. Yeah. One of these, one of the, either way, it's going to pay off. Whether it's going to be Preller who gets the better end of it. Or Bloom. But right now, in this moment, if I'm high in Bloom, I am going to Devers and saying, listen, we're building around you. Let's get something done. And mm-hmm. waste zero time. They right. brought in Kenley Jansen at two two years, 32 million. Do you have a bona fide closer? Like right now I don't understand why. Why did they bring wait, him in? But wait, there's more. Okay. okay. They brought in um what's the guy's first name? Yoshida. The, the Japanese outfielder? Masataka. Masataka Yoshida. Five years, $90 million, with the posting fee that brings it to 105. That's more than they offered Devers in spring training. Uh, not Devers, uh, Bogarts. Bogey. That's the 105 that they paid total for, for Yoshida is more than they offered Bogarts in spring training, which was $90 million. Mm-hmm. Couple of that in with the Jansen 32. You're paying $137 million for two players. When in theory, that's where you need to start with Xander Bogarts if you wanted a low ball. Like a guy who has won two rings as a member of the Red Sox, arguably the captain of that Red Sox team. The face of your franchise for the last 10 years 
as you transition out of the David Ortiz era and into the next era. Yep. The steady presence at shortstop. You got rid of Betts. You got rid of Benintendi. Both of them for nothing. Sure, Verdugo's not bad, but he's no Wookie Betts. Yeah. They botched that deal. We all know it. We all know it. Mm-hmm. And you had Xander Bogarts walk. They have... If I'm Rafael Devers, I am blocking the Red Sox phone number. I am requesting a trade right now and refusing to play until he gets out of it. Wow. They, the Red Sox have shown to me they have zero indication to to keep a sustained winner on the field. Um, and if I'm Devers, ever, I want no part of it. Have they ever? 04 to 07, that, that, those years. Oh, I mean, they, it's, it's a cycle five, of them. Five year right window. now? Exactly. That's, my, that's, they're, that's, they're that's where that. I was going. What, what, what were they in, in 2012? They were trash. Worst team in baseball. Worst team in baseball. They were what were they in 2013? World Series champions. What were they in 2014? They were not great. Exactly. That's my point. That's what they right. do. Right. But but where where now? They were yeah. the top of the mountain was what 2018. 18. They've been like this ever since. Yeah, I mean 2021. Just a straight down. 2021. They had a they had a fluke good year. Uh, me and Mike called that out since day one that they are not a good team. They're just playing over their uh, means. All right. No, you called it. Yep. Bogey and Devers are the team. Mm-hmm. Always have been. They were. The last five years. Yeah, since since Devers came up, really. Four, um, four five years, four years ago. And, I mean, to – I guess Trevor Story is probably going to move over to shortstop, move back over to shortstop. I would imagine, right? And, that, um, that, and that's the other part that blows my mind. You commit the money to Story for six years. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, with an opt out, there was an opt out in there somewhere. I think four years. What's going to stop him from going? You're going to want to keep him there too. Otherwise, you'll get a total rebuild that you're waiting four Dude, years I, to start. I'm, I'm There's looking. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm what looking the Red at Sox are doing. I'm looking at their team right now. Devers is the best. Next is Story. And then after that, Verdugo, Kike, or Eric Hosmer. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Verdugo and Kike are, are solid no, pieces they're, that, they're, that you will need on a yeah. championship caliber team yes. to get over a hump. But they're not your third and fourth best players on a right. championship exactly. team. Exactly. If I am the Red Sox, I am posting everybody for sale total fire fucking sale. rebuild right here i mean fire sale there's like five guys that you could even fucking sell off they are yeah they have no pitching either fucked yeah chris sale fucking six six no. fucking lanky tiny fucking 120 what's what's his guy a bag of balls and a roll of gauze 183 let's see who do they have that's of note Whit- whitlock I, yeah. sale our boy Joelly, Joelly. Nick, Nick Pavetta, James Paxton. That's right. I forgot he signed. I forgot about that. Chris Martin. That was right. They just, uh, they just signed him too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hauk and Barnes. Three pitchers. Frazier. All I'm hearing is three or four pitchers you can get anything for. That you're, yeah. I mean, out of, the, big, out of all the biggest those guys, name on that is Garrett Whit- Whitlock. Yeah, that's the guy you're going to get the most for. Maybe. But maybe, how old? How old is he? 26. Yeah, you trade. Yeah, why not? Yeah. You got like fucking what? Two years I mean, of Major League Service at most? I saw, this, I saw this on TikTok. It was from Will Middlebrooks' uh, podcast with, yeah, with Jeff Passan. Okay. Boston doesn't do bridge years. Mm-hmm. You need to either compete or tear it down right now. This decision has to be made this month. Well, just had a bridge year last year. So. Right, and now it's time to tear it down. I mean, and yeah. pass, Jeff Passon said it best. So you agree with me? Thank you. Teams, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I've, I've been saying this, yeah. This Team, but teams is like Dodgers. <laughs> the, the, teams like the Dodgers, 
Giants, Yankees, Red Sox, teams with established brand, you know, histories of winning. Teams that are, you know, have the money to put out voice over a team year in and year out are, you know, you, you shouldn't, the, the Red Sox have the money, have the capability to put a competitive team on the field year in and year out. And they should be doing that. There's zero reason, zero, for them to be in this situation where they let their stop, their, their face their franchise ball, botching a trade for the best player they've had since prime David Ortiz, maybe even Ted Williams. Pedroia. Okay, Pedroia's, yeah. I was talking about Mookie Betts, but you know, I. I know, but I'm saying, hmm. It, it, there's, there, there's, there's a lot that's gone that's wrong. 708 Pedroia was, was pretty, pretty fucking good. good. Yeah. So there's a lot that's gone wrong in the last five years. Yeah. And now we're at the point where the only correction, the course, the, the, the only path to success, tear it all down. All right. I agree. I mean, that was a long run. I wasn't expecting to go off. Well, you consider yourself partially a Red Sox fan for some reason, so. I do enjoy I do, do enjoy watching the Sox games. Fuck them. Um, they suck. Anyway. Uh, the, while Boston's actually, in shambles. You know, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, you, know, okay, you, know okay. the, you know the fucking first thing that they should do? Boston. I'm going to guess you're going to say fire Alex Boyd. Fire that rat fucking bastard. Get him the fuck out of here. I know you were what? Exile this dude to the fucking moon. Get him out of here. He has ruined that team. He has destroyed them. Look at them. What have they done? Fuck him. Fuck his fucking gray beard. That rat faced motherfucker. Fuck him. Get him out of here. That's my advice for you, Hein Bloom. Do it. All right. So what were you going to say? So so while while the Red Sox are Champions and the rest of the division is playing money ball. Because Toronto hasn't done shit. They've been linked to everyone having done shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm shocked. That they're another team. Well, yeah. Um, the Yankees had the biggest fish in the pond. They had to deal with. Yep. But it seemed like a lot of the Yankees offseason was very much reliant on what happened here. Well, yeah. With Aaron Judge. That's what you expect. Now, obviously, we knew Giants and the Yankees are going to duke it out. Judge is going to fly to the San Diego during the winter meetings, though, and apparently take a meeting with the fucking San Diego Padres, throw everyone off, who informally gave him 10 for 400, as I mentioned earlier. The Giants reportedly got to 10 for 400, which... We don't know if that's been confirmed or not. You know, Heyman said San Francisco was a landing spot. Heyman said he's headed there. John Heyman pulled a Bob Nightingale during the Trevor Bauer saga. Yep. Although Heyman backtracked and said, oh, no, I jumped the gun. Bob never, never does. That's why we love Bob. Sticks oh, Bob, shit. Bob sticks to his guns, man. He Bob, will ne- Bob knows it's bad he, info, but it's my info. <laughs> he will never holster them. He is keeping them fucking blazing. Alec Baldwin anyway. style. <laughs> anyway. So the buzz was, was all judge the Giants. Anyone was, everyone was waiting for it. Apparently, Giants players were, were hyped about it. Logan Webb must have been left out of that group chat. Because <laughs> um, he made he, he was very upset with, with John Hammond, uh, a la Tomas Nito with Bauer. A lot of parallels there. We had to wait almost 24 hours, though. Oh, no, no. Actually, no. Only 12. Yeah. 12 hours. To wake up and find out that Aaron Judge... Plans to sign a nine-year, $360 million deal with the New York Yankees. And New as, York. As part of that deal, he's going to be named the New York Yankees captain. He 
got to sign with the no team shit. that has suffered the most over the last the fan base that has suffered the most over the last 10 years. Let's I knew you were gonna bring this up. Let's too. let's let's take a moment of silence for the fallen and suffering. Yankees. I'm sorry, but that, that tweet was hysterical. Bruh. That tweet was hysterical. <laughs> it, it, like the, the guy the guy who quote tweeted saying I'm a Marlins fan. And they, with the best player in franchise history, literally died. Yeah. Just. Yeah. You know. uh, just asinine. But anyway. Hey, yeah. Yankee fans are, are something. Else. Um, Aaron, anyway, Judge. Aaron Judge stays where he belongs in New York. Now, I know I know a lot of people would not have him. They don't like the Yankees. They don't like the Yankees. Oh. That's why. As a self-proclaimed Yankee hater. Oh. Uh, I love this. I I'm a massive Aaron Judge fan. I don't hate the Yankees themselves. I hate the fans. I said this multiple times. When the Yankees do good, the fans are more annoying. Well, you know all that fun stuff. Aaron Judge should have been only should only be wearing Yankee uniform. There's zero reason for him to go anywhere else. This is his town, his team. Aaron Judge is the New York Yankees post core four. I agree. Realistically, that's all there is to it. I I think the, the Yankees biggest... got to the ninth year, mm-hmm. and I think I think it was Hal who called him directly and said, "Hey, what do you want?" And Judge said he wants to be Yankee. Okay, well, what's it going to take? Mm-hmm. And Judge said that ninth year, boom, Hal got it done after meeting the Pope. Yeah, true story. I know. How was hanging out with the Pope? Five days later, he gets Aaron Judge. Yeah, I. It's tremendous for the Yankees. It's tremendous for Aaron Judge, and I mean the man bet on himself and won yeah. at an astronomical rate. Yep. So but there was a lot that went went wrong in this. This is one of the strangest free agents, uh, free agent sweepstakes we've seen between the Time Magazine article coming out. The tweet from Heyman, you know, the staged TMZ video with him and him in San Francisco. Yeah, all this stuff is it was just one of the weirdest, weirder free it, agency it was developments. Of a single guy. Like it, it is... Yeah, I mean, granted, Bauer and his merch store was one thing. Judge now, judge with everything. Yeah, I was gonna say judge isn't it was a dick weird. though. That's the right. difference. No, yeah. Bauer um, ass hat. Yeah, just absolute clown. Um, so that yeah. being said, when all is said and done, how will Aaron Judge be looked at in Yankee Yankee history? Don't know. I think he will be in Monument Park. I oh, hope of course. he is. They put everyone in there. No, they don't. But no, it's retired based number, right? But I I hope he is. I hope he's yeah. the next Yankee captain. I think. Well, no, it, in, his, it. in the in the deal, it, it says he's going to be in captain. Oh, yeah? I, I read that. So, yeah, I think I read that. Uh, I forgot who tweeted that out. Maybe it was maybe it was Jack Curry. So they have to name him captain at his presser then. Probably. He better. If they don't, then you're a liar. I'm holding you to this. I'll find the tweet. I'll find the tweet. Yeah, you better. So, yeah, I mean, it's great for great for both sides. That's uh, it's good for baseball. It's great. It's great for baseball. I mean, mm-hmm. the contracts that are being signed over the past few years, it it, it is great for baseball as a whole. Yeah, and, and yeah. I was gonna say this before, but I think that the biggest mistake that the Yankees ever did was trade for John Carl Stanton. They jumped the gun on a guy who won the MVP, had a crazy year. Shouldn't have done it. Well, speaking of Stanton, two things. Mm-hmm. One, with this signing, the Yankees are the first team with three $300 million players. Mm-hmm. Cole, Stanton, Judge. And remember how I mentioned that Nightingale went full Nightingale? Yep. Here's the actual tweet from Bob Nightingale, December 7th at 8.58 a.m. I have the timestamp. The hashtag Yankees believe Tuesday afternoon that their offer was mm-hmm. similar to the hashtag SF Giants, 
but still didn't know yet which direction Stanton would go. You know, now would have been a perfect time for the grub button, but you know. Why? They didn't know which direction Stanton would go. I know. Oh, you want me? Gotcha. Bob now I see what you're saying. Full, full lightning go. Um, that being said, someone tweeted out, this has to be a joke. He's got to be fucking with us. I mean, he honestly, would you between, be surprised? Between that and then his his tweet about after the Bogarts deal, where he said the Padres are the first, have three $300 million players, all infielders, but Bogarts doesn't even have $300 million. Bob, yeah. Bob, sticks to his guns. Bob, like I said, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like he, like I said before, he sticks to his guns. He does not holster them. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, let's see. You mentioned Cody Bellinger earlier. Yes. I'm surprised the the Blue Jays didn't get him. He goes to the yeah. Cubs on a one year, seventeen and a half million dollar deal. I thought he had multi year offers. Only wanted a one year deal. I'm with him. Prove it deal with the Cubbies. Yep. Nice ballpark for him to play at. And uh he's getting 17 and a half million to try and prove himself. Yep. That that's a, that's a pretty solid proof deal, whether you make the money or not. Yeah. Um again, we mentioned that the Cubs are somewhere in God knows where. They're buying buying up these guys and trying to figure something out. Could Bellinger be used as a trade chip at the deadline? Yeah, of course. He could. Do you see that going that way? Uh we'll see. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's very, very possible. But like I said, we'll see. Um, you Josh never know. Bell. Cubs might Cubs might compete. That's true. That's true. I mean, that's what the Guardians are looking to do with signing of Josh Bell. Two for three th- two for thirty three with an opt out after the next this upcoming year. So realistically mm-hmm. it could be a one year deal. Josh Bell going to Cleveland. Giving them a reliable first base when they haven't had since Carlos Santana. Maybe Travis Hafen. Um I I like this deal a lot. I think Josh Bell's in a perfect situation now. Not a ton of pressure. He can be a veteran leader on a very young club. Team that needs power. And a team that needs power. And it's a very good deal with the opt out because he have a great year, opt out. Get himself some more, get himself some more money, mm-hmm. or he can, you know, have a mediocre year, figure out where the market's at, stay in, get a full thirty-three million dollars, and he'll only be what 29, 30 when this contract runs out. He's young still, right? Twenty-seven, I think. No, I'm not sure. Twenty-eight. Not sure. Don't know. I his feel birthday. like he's young. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, but either way, it's it's a good deal for Josh Bell, good deal for Cleveland, and it gives them. An actual power bat in the middle of that line. Yeah, he's 30. He is 30. Wow, okay. Never mind then. Two-year deal makes a lot of sense. Cleveland was in on Jose Abreu. They didn't get him. Yep. So you knew they were looking for them first baseman. Um, what else we got? Oh, well, while the Giants were in pursuit of, there you go. of Judge, their goal was to get two outfielders. I guess to pair with the strength gear, however they want to play it. Who knows? They signed Mitch Hanniger, mm-hmm. three for 43 and a half. I think there's an opt out in there. Not too sure. I don't remember. Um, you see a lot of three year deals with, an opt- with opt outs in either year one or two, which is interesting because we used to see three year deals straight up or two year deals. The opt outs were very rare, only for, for injury cl- uh, cases. Yeah, mostly. Part. Now, granted, Hanager has had an injury history, and his testicle. Poor testy. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. God bless the Mariners. Which is still wild, cause, and that's that still reigns supreme today. That the Mariners have as many ruptured testicles as playoff yes. appearances in their franchise history. It is it kind is of just insane. Many. Can we get that ratio to six to six this year? I really hope I, not. I hope there's two people ruptured testicles this year. Oh, keep, oh, you you keep, wanted to you want you keep want to it on top. 
Keep it on you top. Want nuts, you want the balls one and got it. Yeah, give it a little cushion. Oh man, uh, good deal for Hanniger. Good deal for the Giants. They get an yes. actual bat. You know they missed out a couple guys. They're going to turn their attention to Correa now. We've we've known this. Um, yeah, how many teams do you think are in on Correa right now? Well, you have obviously Giants and Twins. Yes, you got to assume that Baltimore should at least checking in on him. Yeah, Cubs, Cubs, and the Red Sox have to at least consider. They ain't spending shit. That market. Let's talk about realistic options here. Um, but yeah, everybody but the Red Sox, and that that, that we name. Any others? Dodgers, maybe. No, they said they're not gonna. No, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, earlier today they said they're not going to pursue. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just them, because that's it's the an thing interesting with shortstop. So many teams have shortstops, you know. Yeah. It's an it's an interesting market. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, it, it's teams. Yeah, I think the teams that are willing to spend too. Yeah, maybe exactly. the Angels. I don't even know. Like the Angels yeah, are kind they got of so in, much in money. a weird spot. They got so much money on the books. Right, that's the thing. They have a weird, they're in a weird spot. They need a shortstop though. They do, but but with the team wait. up for sale and and all did that they, stuff. Did they get someone? Who knows? In a trade. Maybe they did. I don't even remember. Don't don't that fucking brush is... me off, you bitch. Oh, I'm saying that team is just all over the place. It's oh, Gio, Gio Urshela. Team. Urshela. Oh, I forgot the Brian Urshela. Yeah. Who I'm but, imagining but, would play shortstop because they have Rendon. Rendon. Yeah. Because yeah. they're paying. But, I, but again, the team is dollars is all over the place with them for sale. With them focusing on pitching and and Trout and, and then Otani's future. Which is now even more being heavily linked to the Mets than it was at the beginning of the year. With Steve Cohen's willingness to blow past the luxury tax. It's it's insane. Um he's gonna double the luxury tax. He's gonna fucking yeah. He's a <laughs> fuck your luxury tax. What else the Mets Steve Let's... Cohen tax? Yeah, fuck it. Uh the Mets, we did mention they needed mid mid tier starters, Jose Quintana, two for twenty six. Uh it's a similar deal to Taiwan Walker. Reestablish yourself, figure it out, go go, go find find more money elsewhere. About Ty. Right. I'm saying it's similar to, to what Ty got with the Mets. Oh. You know, establish yourself again as a reliable starter. Prove you can stay healthy. Prove you can pitch full seasons, consistency. Go get your money elsewhere. And it's a lefty starter. So him and David Peterson compete. Um, let's see. What did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, that's right. Today. Today, the sh- fucking Steve Cohen walked out of his office, wherever, whether it's in Connecticut or City Field, saying, are you not entertained by the end of the night? The fucking famous scene, literally, probably word for word, hopefully. Started off with Brandon Nimmo, another big domino, one arguably the biggest position player available after the shortstops. Eight years, $160 million. Brandon Nimmo is staying in New York, a lifetime Met for you know, full no trade clause. This one feels good for me. It does. I feel happier that Nimmo's a lifetime Met than I would have with DeGrom. Yeah. It's it's a different feeling. And it's a call it's a culture. It's Brandon Nimmo is a guy like I, I'm so happy that he's gonna be here for eight years. That my I can get myself a demo jersey, yeah. Well, yeah, but like you it's know, I, deal jersey. I have said this pr- probably hundreds, if not thousands of times. Brandon Nimmo is the player I want my kids to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is the ideal example for a young baseball player. So, yeah, to uh have the possibility that my kids actually might be able to get to watch him. That feels good. Guy that I've eight always years, wanted them to watch years, live. And yeah, oh, eight there years. I'm going to be pretty fucking old, man. So yeah, she's it's kind of weird. Um, but but wait, there's more. David Robertson apparently agreed to a deal a few days ago, by the way. With the Mets one year, $10 million. That was done a couple days ago. He passed his physical today. 
and they announced it today. No one fucking knew this. Like in a world of constant hey. trying to be first, trying to get it done. There's how a reason. No one heard about that. It's insane. Well, we don't want. You go. Oh, you want me to? All right. There you go. Oh, you said there's a reason. Okay. But oh. It's, it's the fact that David Robertson's his own agent. There's nobody to leak the news to anyone unless he wants to be heard. Exactly. No agent fees. David Robertson's getting straight $10 million yep. pre tax. Yep. Well, fee. But yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Not tax. No agent fees. No, no. That's what I'm saying. There's no agent fees, but he's getting that all that the whole ten million dollars is his before it gets taxed. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe you cut out or something. I didn't hear that part. Yes, yes. Yeah. Pre tax. Yes. It's all his. All his. No, no. And he and he's no fees. He's made a nice career for himself doing that. Yeah. Too. Yeah, this he's been doing the, that. The I think his whole career. Nice nah, whole after career. His, after after his initial couple of deals. I remember, yeah, because I remember on MLB Network. I don't remember so when that was, was. It was his Cubs deal, his Phillies deal, and now his Mets deal. Those three yes. I remember were him. Were all Definitely. Him. But I think there was a Yankee deal he negotiated too. I don't remember. But what I do remember is on MLB Network, they had him at the winter. He was there at the winter meetings because he had just fired his fucking agent oh, years like ago. The, yeah, day, yeah, yeah. the day before. And he was there and he was interviewing and he said, I'll be representing myself. And he broke like the. I remember that when he broke the news that he was becoming his own agent. Fucking and that was like ass. the wildest thing. And d- someone else did that too. I don't remember who, but it, it's fucking cool. That's really fucking yeah. cool to do. Definitely but, needs yeah. a business manager of some sort. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm sure he does. Um, so the Mets starting to reshape the bullpen. They also brought in Brooks Raley for uh, Keyshawn Askew. Um, so the My Mets are, are starting to, to put it together here. The next time I'm yes. going to fall, most likely is going to be Carlos Rodon. A uh, lot of speculation to him to the Yankees. Your thoughts on that? Is that is that the place he's going to go? Is there another team you think could slide in? And, and... Oh, yeah, of course. I, you know, the Giants are a big possibility for him to come back. Um, the, you know, a, a, a big thing that, like, you know, I never thought about, you know, when it came to – signing contracts as a free agent or in general is for a lot of guys, it, the, the taxes are so different in every state, you know, and it's the jock tax. So you get taxed for where you're actually physically playing. Mm-hmm. So those guys in the central, if you're getting a big deal in the central, you're fucking, you're, you're really fucking paying. You're off. chilling. But, uh, but like California, the highest tax bracket in, in, in the, in the country. So for like, yep. for like guys like, you know, Mookie, right. He's playing so many games in L.A. and then going to San Francisco and San Diego. Spent a lot of money. But anyway, Rodon. Uh, yeah, he could be going back to San Francisco. Um, I wouldn't be shocked about Texas with him, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that they're still He's, on They've been linked there, him. yep. Um, maybe St. Louis. I, I would take them as a sneaky candidate. Well, St. Louis spent a little money this year uh, yeah. against their MO. Wilson Contreras going. Yeah, team uh, that never fucking signs for five agents. for eighty-seven and a half. So they have Yadi's yeah. apparent. Uh, yeah, Yadi's heir apparent in their mm-hmm. his replacement. For five years. Cubs have got to be kicking themselves there. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Contreras too. Yeah, I, th- I guess that's really it. I'm I'm a little shocked that the Tigers haven't uh, done anything. Done I think they shit. were I think they were a little disappointed with what their free agents did last year and their rookies did last year, and I think they're gonna. They don't want to commit money anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. They'll maybe make a couple smaller signings, if that, and see what their rookies and their signed players from last year do this year. Um, yeah, because Baez looked like the Baez, well, not the not the Baez of the Mets, where he's. Was- Hey, the play. He, he was playing out of mind Dude, he was, all yeah. year. That was he took a massive leap backwards. Yeah, whatever he was doing with the Mets, that was that's got to be what different. he does going for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. What let me ask you about a name here that that real quick that I I know you like the last few years. 
especially for the Mets. But a guy who's Mark, we haven't heard shit about. Mm-hmm. Andrew Chafin. Mm-hmm. Free agent. Had two solid years in Detroit. What's his market looking like? What do you think? I mean, lefty reliever. He's a little older. The lefty, the lefty relief market now that Petro's gone away is definitely interesting. Um, he's the guy I like a lot. You and I have talked about him being a Met the last few years. Yeah, but now the Mets are out of that with the acquisition of Brooks Raley. Yeah, and I saw the Mets were linked to Chafin, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he would go. Um, maybe the Phillies, maybe the Braves. You know those teams. I feel like, yeah, it's trying to they, show up both them. They love. They love to get those kinds of guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's but an interesting one. Yeah, I think he'll play a big role somewhere, though. He could go anywhere, really. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he went to a shitty team last year. Yeah. Hopefully, um, he'll go to a better team this year. And the one thing we won't talk about this episode, I want to touch on, because I'm going to want Mac on. Okay. Major League Baseball apparently is trying to use three different baseballs this year. Yes, that's right. Now, obviously, there's the reports, you know, they, they use the juice and the normal balls. We, we figured national games. Okay, fine. Study was done where three different baseballs are found to be used. Um, I didn't read the full thing. I'm still digesting. Yeah, we had a lot. Either. We had a lot to go through, too as much. you heard, as you guys can yeah, say. Too much. So we're gonna try and break it down next episode. Just know that that's something to keep an eye on because Rob Manfred has been very adamant about how the baseballs, what baseballs are used, stuff like that. I believe there's something to do with the supply chain that they're blaming. Which, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Deal with it. Everybody's dealing with it. Um. There's a there's something fishy going on that someone's got to explain some stuff. Yeah, that's all I know. Um, that's that's really it. Congratulations, to Fred McGriff, elected to the yes. Hall of Fame unanimously by the temporary committee. Yes. Um, and the Pittsburgh Pirates on the first ever draft lottery. Thoughts on that one? I mean, I know you watched it. I I, I suffered through it all. Yeah, so. yeah. It it was it was about a total of ten minutes. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer. Um, At least fifteen. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a draft lottery. I mean, we could have been a little more of a show. I, 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 that's what I was. Everyone say. looked I awkward, think, uncomfortable. Yes, the presentation could have and should have been much better. They should have made it, you know, the draft stage and graphics and. You know, instead of fucking Raul Banya saying the fucking Florida Marlins, you know. You okay? You caught that too. Thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and flipping it over. And no one touched on that either. No, of course. Everyone Why would they? Lost over that. Yeah, of course. They're not. They're not going to call him out on his mistake. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I like the idea of it. I do think that it's the first year, right? We'll see how it goes. Um. You know they'll, yeah, they'll they'll oh, upgrade yeah. it. It'll get yeah. better. Oh yeah, I agree. It, it was it was just stuffy and uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, like which was initial one. Like I, I I but I like the idea of it. Like the A's got fucked, right? They were supposed they should they should pick three. They're going to be picking six now, right? So the like, A's got fucked. Wow, where have we heard that one before? And the Texas Rangers boosted up, and the Twins. Right, they were like ten and eleven or eleven and twelve, oh, whatever, yeah, and, yeah. and then they, they were in the top six. So I think the Cubs dropped down too, or something like that. Yep. So, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. It it worked. It worked. It 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 did. You know what? It caused its slight chaos. Yeah, but not not. I thought it was going to be a little bit more drastic. Like like I want to I wanted to see the Brewers get that fucking first overall pick, dude. That would be oh from the 18th spot. Yeah. That would be yo, or at least the top seven, nah. dude. Fucking top three, it's one of those bottom fucking teams. That would be the yeah. absolute chef's kiss if that happened. Any of those I fucking do. Orioles, Giants, or Brewers, right? Go I on. do want to say though, I found a, 
I think we have to use this this thing more often. The manifestation card from last week. The fuck? I wrote this. Remember, remember the last episode we did? Oh yeah, that's right. It worked. Manifestation right here. Bring back Nemo. Nemo is back in the fold. Um. Yeah, if you haven't already, click the link in all of our any of our socials uh, bio. Go vote for the Hall of Fame on our ballot. We have fifty ballots already in. They don't release the the, the results till the end of January. Plenty of time. Let's get this number up to 100. Send your friends, family, anyone who's baseball. Follow us on socials. Don't be so fucking smelly. Um, buy soap is on soap. We've been rolling. Haven't had a chance to do that in the middle. Uh, soap is on soap. 15% off. Use promo code TAP. 15% off your, your soap order. Don't be so fucking smelly. Don't be like the Giants. Don't stink it out so bad that no one wants to play for you. Don't be like the Padres and 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 just have throw every throw money at everyone just to get them to come to you. Don't be so smelly. Get some soap. Soap is on soap. Soap is on dot com. Fifteen percent off. Promo code tap. Um, oh. check out the boys from the tip. <laughs> from the tips on the power play. Boys are killing it. Um, yeah, check them out. Socials at take a pitch on everything. Except for fucking YouTube because that's fucking stupid. It's Take Fish Pod, right? Take Fish Pod. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You type in Take a Pitch, but say, do yeah. at Take a Pitch Pod if you want to find us directly because they yes. changed it. They changed it. Fuck, fuck YouTube. Rumble, baby. That's where we're at. We're on Rumble now. At Take a Pitch. Uh, there's no at, but Take a Pitch. All right, it works. So at Take a Pitch. There you go. We're just yep. claiming it now. Um, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. At take a pitch. Yes, sir. Merch link in bio. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anything else? Oh yeah. Uh, Billy. Hmm. I, I feel like we have to create a lawsuit against our friend Nick Federico. Hmm. For stealing, stealing something oh. that you say right around this time of the episode too. Oh, my my trademark. I haven't done Your it in a trademark. while, but yeah. I know. I know. Why, why, why don't you show them how it's done? Well, we got we, we got peace. Love you, bye.